Welcome back, listeners, to That's a Good Card. Today, Yah will have the challenge of getting me to say, That's a Good Card. While Yah will be doing the convincing, I'll be playing the devil's advocate. If you're interested in more Tag C content, check out the links below to our Patreon, where we post extra Tag C content. Also, now's a good time to remind you to hit that subscribe button if you're listening to us on YouTube, and please, 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 please leave a comment below with your thoughts on today's topic, as well as a suggestion for our next card. All right, yeah, let's get started. What have you brought for us today? Okay, once again, I've dug into Yaw's bags of tricks, meaning I just Ooh. looked at the uh, latest tournament results and tried to find something spicy that I hadn't seen before. And this one comes to us from a winning list, the winner Ooh. of the CEDH The Finals. Congrats to Nicholas, aka Joking101. Um, he ran Blue Farm, and I hadn't seen this card in at any point blue farm list before maybe there is like somebody for somebody playing blue farm is gonna go no yeah everybody plays drana and linvala drana and linvala is a legendary creature vampire angel it is one generic pip two white pips and a black pip it has flying vigilance activated abilities of creatures your opponent's control can't be activated drana and linvala has all activated abilities of all creatures your opponent's control you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to activate those abilities. It's also a 3-4. As you could tell, that was a mouthful. This card does yep. a lot. It does a lot. It's got a wall of text, and generally speaking, we like to see it. I'd like to kind of roll back for a second here. You did mention uh, Nick, the Blue Farm pilot who won the CDH the finals. I participated in this event, and I actually played against Nick. Oh, boy. <laughs> and he whooped me. And you know what's funny? Is that in that game, he won through Drana and Linvala. He Ooh. actually had Drana and Linvala out, and we were playing against a Yusan. So he used Drana and Linvala to activate oh, wow. Yusan's activated ability to tutor a creature. It was very fun. So Whoa. it's fresh in the memory for me. And honestly, <laughs> kind of disrespectful, ya, that you're going to bring up a card that knocked me out of the turn. It didn't really knock me out. It was like round two. <laughs> but still, I just got whooped by this thing in a tournament, and you brought that up? Oh, my gosh. I, I, I do apologize. Come on. I, it, read the room. It's no, a, I'm just kidding. It's a <laughs> Shout out to Nick. card. Um, yeah, it's a good one. All right, I'm ready to hear what lists that you see this card in. <laughs> um, so I think normally I had seen this as its own commander, right? So you're going to see this card yeah, quite a bit. in like in, high power. In I've like high power. This. Like I think some mm -hmm. people had tried to make it CDH, but I've only, I haven't seen it go too, too hard because it kind of requires like other creatures, but I'm sure we'll get into that. So um, mm -hmm. right now this play sees play in about 642, so... That's kind of like a, a little bit under what uh, it's also under what we have kind of deemed like solid fringe, right? This is on that like yeah. cusp of yeah. like fringe. And so I think anything between like 500 and a thousand or like 500 and like 1500 is like right there in the general, like this isn't a lot of considering piles in CEDH. Yeah, so yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. like perfect. Some of our spicier cards that we've brought to the pod, the ones that are like anywhere from <laughs> zero to like, 300 yeah. appearances yeah. those are like super fringe like <laughs> then you're starting to get into like the Ooh. that deep into the considering pile but anyway oh, i'll there. let you continue where else are we seeing this card uh obviously quite a bit of few blue farm lists um a lot mm -hmm. of sissy and then yep. some timnathrasios is where this is also seeing a little bit of play yeah I think because, well, well, we'll get into it here in a little bit. Actually, I'll go into my kind of um, my first point. So are you ready for why I think this card needs to be in the main deck? Sure, let's dive into it. So the first point is it's a really good asymmetrical stacks that propels mm -hmm. you forward. So this stacks out uh, mana dorks for Kinnon, right? Kinnon's activated yep. abilities. I think it's so funny. I feel like a lot of times we talk about cards on this pod, and they're always so good against Kinnon's. The Kinnon players must hate our podcast. But like, Kinnon still is like, that's the crazy thing about Kinnon. It's still pretty well situated, right? Um, oh, for sure. The reason that we have to talk about this is because Kinnon in, is in such a good position. So is. really, Kinnon players, we're giving you validation that you're doing a great job because we have to tech to freaking beat you. <laughs> Right, and so this also shuts off Kinnon, Magda, Najila, Sisse, Thrasios, 
and uh, one a card that has been kind of the bane of my existence lately, Deathrite Shaman. Right, I I know I already mentioned Mana Dorks, <laughs> but like that's because you've been playing out of your yard. I've been playing, playing out of my yard so much. A lot. Yeah, the and Deathrite, Deathrite is like so scary to me. It's like, oh man. Yep. Anything that like activates, which is kind of what we talked about when we talked about Verity Circle, right? Like we are seeing more yeah. of these Timna Thrasios lists, right? That have activated creature, uh, activated abilities. Magda is still doing really well, right? And mm-hmm. she needs her ability to kind of win the game. Yeah. And for those of you who didn't listen to Verity Circle, you know, I'll post a link in the description below or post it up on the screen here. TLDR, we basically talked about how most of the popular lists are playing anywhere between like six and 10 creatures that have activated abilities, or at least the ones that turn sideways on their activated abilities. Mm -hmm. So probably add a couple more to six to eight and bump it up a little bit for the activated abilities that don't require tapping. But anyway, continue on. So yeah, the fact that this really kind of shuts down quite a few game plans out there, right? is pretty important i think and so i i think that we're seeing these this a little bit more because for those mirror matchups yeah the same day that your tournament was going on there was a tournament in san diego at tc rockets yeah and there i saw a lot of mirror matchups right mm-hmm. there were some really oddball commanders in that as well with again like activated abilities shout out to the Boris Armory, uh, Wayne for taking down the TC uh, Rockets tournament on Zerda. Shout out. Shout out, right. So my second point for this card is that with so many creatures in play, those abilities that you're shutting off are now your abilities. Your abilities Mm -hmm. are my abilities. Thank you so much for letting me have a mana dork, right? And it's not, I think it's really important to note in this moment that Drana and Limvala has vigilance, right? And so you can still go to beats. Um, it's a 3-4 flying, right? So it has evasion. And 3 isn't a lot, but it can add up in terms of, like, just, again, a little bit of that incremental incremental damage. Um, if you're playing this in, like, a Timnal list, right, she's an evasive flyer. And then you can still tap her in the second main for mana or to activate a Kinnon activation, uh, what have you. Yep. Because my third point, and I just realized right now that I'm just literally going down. Go ahead. Before you go into the third point, I want to talk about this, your abilities or my abilities part. Because anecdotally speaking, this card proves to be super effective against one card in specific. Hmm. And that's Ranger Captain of Eos. Ooh. Oh. I've seen a lot of really, really interesting interactions between this card specifically and Ranger Captain. Because if there's a Ranger Captain on the battlefield and Adrana and Lavala is cast, the Ranger Captain pilot is put into a really sticky situation. They have to think to themselves, and most of the time what ends up happening from what I've seen is that the Ranger Captain pilot will be like, shit, I can't give this to the Drana and Lavala. I, I, as much as I want to say that I can remove this piece later on at a different time, I can't just give them my Ranger Captain ability. I have to crack it right away. So it's almost like removal for Ranger Captain That's is really what I've seen. Because if you don't, you're put in this really shitty situation where now you've given a ranger captain to the person who plays Drana and Linvala, and that's tough. Sure, they still have to sacrifice to use it, but at that point, like you're scared at that point where, okay, if they cast this copy of ranger captain and then activate ranger captain, like do you lose the game? <laughs> but once once they once they sacrifice theirs, can't you just sacrifice yours? Sure right? Sure, but After you the can fact- respond to it. So it's just non-creatures, right? So like, for example, let's, let's yeah, yeah. say you are you have Thassa's Demonic Consultation. Oh, you're right. right? Yeah. So, so you can do it in a way where right. you can finesse it to a way where you are protecting yourself and still able to cast whatever you want to do. So like you can do a reverse Thassa's Tain Impact. Yeah, yeah. Tain yeah, impact you can then, do a reverse yeah. Thoracle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but it can so be a really dangerous. sticky situation. It it's is super sticky. dangerous. But at the same time, like regardless, you're giving your opponent a ranger captain activation potentially, right? So you're in this, you're stuck in a weird situation. So that, really I just good. wanted to bring to light that anecdote because it is a really common occurrence in CEDH to see a ranger captain on the board, and it puts you in a mental pretzel where you're like you don't really know what to do because the greedy side of you is like shit. I'm not going to crack my Ranger Captain, and I'm going to hope that I can remove that Drana and Linvala, or somebody else removes it for me. 
you just made me think of a card that I've been a little bit more. I'm, I'm back. I'm back in love with. Maybe not in love, but like it's back in my good graces. Dothy Voidwalker again because I've been playing a lot of Rakdos. Uh, yeah. Dothy has just kind of been a little bit of a monster for me, and I you just made me think that oh shit, like now my Dothy is putting things into like the void, right? And now Drana and Limvala has the ability to tap and. Uh, sack itself to go grab whatever out of the uh, yeah exactly out of there with void so, counters right so you have to make the same decision that you do with ranger so Captain interesting of like shoot i have to crack this now and what sucks with dothy specifically is because you have to tap to do it yep you might get stuck in a situation where you cast your dothy it has summoning sickness the next player in turn order cast drawn on linvala and uh oh you can't crack your dothy nope <laughs> Nope. <laughs> nope. So now they just get <laughs> your Dothy. You, Sucks to suck. <laughs> Sucks to suck. This is a really interesting card. Like, I actually haven't seen it played against me. Um, It's one of those cards that's been around, but, like, it kind of came at a time when, like, there was just so many sets, right? And it's what this is one of those cards that I heard about, I saw a little bit, and it kind of just, like, it kind of just kept, you know, like, things just kept moving forward, and I don't think I really gave it a second look, but and kind of doing research for this, like, and, and having this conversation with you, like, this thing can do a lot, right? And I just really like, again, like, the fact that it's very asymmetrical. Um, mm-hmm. Your abilities are my abilities. And then the last point I was going to make is that, again, that third part is also really key in the sense that you get to use any mana. Mm-hmm. And again, this is really important to me as, like, towards when you're starting to storm off. Like, you stop caring what color mana you're making, right? You can make colorless mana because... You can may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to activate those abilities. That becomes really important because like late game, yeah, you may not have a lot of non-humans, but like maybe you can flip into something through a kin activation, right? And you're you you've been sitting there, you don't have a lot of cards, but now you're able to cheat things in. Or you have Thrasios activations. Yes, that's colorless mana, anyways, but like you have yeah. Thrasios activations. It's also kind of relevant, like the, the certain times that you are able to make infinite colorless mana. Yeah. Like, I think that's kind of interesting because then you can just like spin constantly on abilities that you generally can't spin without having colored mana. So, like, akin an activation, for example. No, no, I don't right. know how relevant that is because I don't know how relevant decks in Orzov Plus are making infinite colorless mana, but I think that it's not nothing. It's a super fringe thing, but that was just something I was thinking about. You're right. And then I think the, the interesting thing to go back to your point earlier, right after my second point was. Let's say the 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 Orzov plus deck has made infinite mana. Now you, the Kinnon and the Thrasios players are kind of stuck, stuck into like, oh shit, can I remove my own creature now? Like now you're trying to potentially have to politic to like get your own creature removed because through them, through your own creature, you win the game. right? Yeah. They're going to potentially try to win the game. And so <laughs> I, I think that just really makes for an interesting like politics conversation of like, can somebody remove my my, cannon, my own right? thing like that's my, gonna like, make us lose the game yeah because i think that if that were me right if i was looking at this like i still think i have to play my creature my commander out just so that i have it out already so i don't have to spend the resources later to remove this piece and then play my commander and then try to potentially find my win i think it depends because i think sometimes it is a soft stacks where people don't want to play true creatures with activated abilities into Drana and Linvala because they don't want to just hand the keys over to that player. So it is kind of soft stacks in that sense Mm -hmm. where it's probably not the best idea for you to cast your Thrasios into the Drana and Linvala player. And like you love that. You love that as a Drana. If if this is on your battlefield, like you just love that. Like, okay, I don't get the activated abilities, but you don't have your commander either. Yeah, you'd have to be really down bad Or you'd have to have specifically the commander activated cards in your hand where you're like, no, I need to do this so I can cast my death Mm -hmm. and rollick, you Mm -hmm. know, or I need to do this so that I can have a fierce up. There's not a lot of other situations where I would recommend casting a creature with an activated ability into Drana and (laughs) Linvala. That's for sure. 
but yeah um yeah i know i just listed off the actual abilities themselves but like i think that they're just pretty impactful right even the flying and vigilance that's how we card assess in general it's yeah right just, you just kind of read the card and then decide which aspects of the card are good and which aspects of the card are bad so i don't fault you for just going down the list <laughs> I, and i think this one has a lot like i said i really fumbled because this thing had a lot of text but it is a lot to parse through and as Kyle just kind of pointed out, it does it can really put people into some really weird situations depending on what they their board state is like when you play this down. And I think that that really plays to your potential uh, favor. So yeah. Yep. And it's OBM proof. It is. It's OBM proof. Three four. Three four. Yep. It's got a booty. All right, Kyle. Let's talk about some downsides. All right, I'll get into the downsides. My first downside is something that I. I struggle with almost every stacks piece in a certain extent because of the issue that it co- a lot of times the stacks piece will completely shut down certain decks, but it doesn't shut down all decks. And when that situation happens, it's mm-hmm. a problem. Yep. Because you have to be able to navigate as a pilot and say to yourself, okay, is this the time that I actually play this card? Like this, you know, maybe that piece in your hand where you kept this because you really want to stop that Kinnon. Or you really want to stop that Magda, but guess what? There's a Rog Side at the table with you. Yeah. And Rog Side is not affected by this card whatsoever. If you cast Drawn and Linvala in a pod with Kinnon, Magda, and a Rog Side as your opponents, you're handing the game yeah. to Rog Side. You're just giving it to them. And I think that for an unseasoned pilot in specific, because we're seeing this in lists that don't traditionally play stacks because it's just like such high value right because i think that's what the draw is i think the draw to it is not necessarily the shutdown aspect but it's the fact that you say yoink give me that you know like i want those abilities like give me that because a really skilled pilot in a good stuffed color pie kind of thing like a pile of good cards in that sense you're okay with taking whatever activate abilities you can get because your deck is built so versatile so that you can just use whatever avenues you can to find a win so if you're a new pilot to one of these types of lists and you can't rec- make that recognition where if you play this card, yeah, sure, it seems great to play this card. It's a 3 fourth flying vigilance. It shuts down people's stuff and it gives you things. But guess what? It might end up shooting yourself in the foot. So I think it, it kind of falls into that sense where, like we talked about before, this is a card that's really popular and like high power and stuff like that. So I think it could potentially pose a trap to newer CDH players where they're just like, they don't think, they just say, wow, I'm in a great position. I'm going to cast this, you know, high power bomb that really everybody hates. I know it's a powerful card, but it might not be the right time to do it. So that's my first point is that it doesn't affect all decks equally. It doesn't bring all decks down equally. So because of that, it's pretty stark. And it's not even that like some decks aren't as affected as much as others. Because like for example, you can make the argument for like Blood Moon not affecting certain lists that are okay with running red mana. You know what I mean? But generally speaking, like Blood Moon will negatively affect all decks that aren't mono red in some capacity. Mm-hmm. Like you're not just like handing them the game. It, mm-hmm. it affects people to varying degrees. Like it's gonna hurt the Simic player more than it's gonna hurt the Jund player, but it's still gonna hurt the Jund player. Whereas this card in particular will hurt zero to certain lists. And that's concerning to me. Since you've seen this a little bit, like what decks besides Rogsai, right? Um, and I think obviously the other po- the other really good deck that obviously that doesn't really care is probably other Tim and Crom decks, right? Like when I actually brought sure. this to you, my, yeah. like, and I was going through like, I can't think of many besides like Ranger Captain. I can't think of many activated abilities. <laughs> I mean, yeah, in activated abilities, they, they really only run, like, Ranger Captain and maybe, like, one other thing. I don't know. It depends on the list. Yeah, their commanders don't give a shit about, like, uh, activated no. abilities, right? Like, it's just sitting on the board being pretty. Yeah. Right? So, Timocrom really doesn't get hurt. Yeah, another list that doesn't get hurt at all is something like a Winota, something like a Tivit. Like, those those decks don't care. Yeah, it, it really doesn't. To be honest, Corbold, like, I... I don't really care that much. When it came down, the only reason I cared is because I lost the freaking game <laughs> because they used the, they used it proactively to win, which I think is kind of rare. Well, I guess it's not necessarily proactive, and that kind of leads myself into my second point. So Go I'm I'm gonna roll back that thought because it's actually not proactive. That's my second point. My second point is that the card isn't proactive because it 
is reliant on your opponent's playing cards. True. Your opponents have to be able to play the creatures with the activated abilities. Once they have done that, you can be proactive and use it to use their abilities to move yourself further. Like what I said, like what happened in my pod with Nick, where he was able to use a Yusan ability to actually do something with it. That being said, if Yusan was not on the battlefield, if nothing, like no other activated abilities were on the battlefield, it's not a proactive card. It's very reactive. You are reliant to get the full effect out of the card. You are reliant on other people. That being said, I will give you a little bit of grace and say that, you know, the full value of the card is not necessarily just baked into that. You're still getting some value by having people think twice about playing their activated ability creatures. You know, just having a three, four fly vi- flying vigilance is mm-hmm. also nice. So it's not like you, it's not like the card is zero. It doesn't have that low, low floor that we've talked about with cer- certain cards where it's literally nothing. It's not playing a REB into a no blue pod it it actually still has some sort of floor (laughs) (laughs) even when the activated ability creatures aren't there so yeah that's my second point is that it is a dependent card to reach its full potential my third point is that it requires knowledge of other decks and interactions as well you kind of have that little bit of strategy where you're piloting other people's decks a little bit with this card so you have to understand when is the right time to use a kinet activation or to activate thrasios or for playing against fringe lists specifically it might get difficult i mean you're gonna have to do some it, can I see that card? Is it? Can I read that card real quick <laughs> to try to figure out like, yeah. okay, what the hell abilities am I shutting down? What am I taking control over? I don't know what this card does. So uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve needed. And I would definitely say that it, it isn't a, a play and forget about card. No. It's something that Not you have to be active with and you have to have a good understanding of the game to, to get its full potential out. So that's my third point, is that it just requires knowledge of other decks and interactions and really when to use specific activated abilities. I mean, like, take the example I just said. Even if you get given a ranger captain, like I said, now you have to parse through that idea of, like, okay, but when do I crack Practice. my ranger captain yep. and then give the other person their ranger cap- captain back? Right. So it's it's kind of difficult. It, it requires a high level of thinking. It requires planning, and it requires skill. So... That's my last point. Um, I'm I'm interested to hear which one of those points you think is the best point. So, yeah, which of those downsides do you think rang the most true for you? I think it's knowing how to play this card. I think that, like, every time we talk about stacks, which is not an often here, it has been at least a month or so, um, it is kind of really knowing how to navigate and when to play. I will say to your point about... Um, you're probably never playing this down early, right? Like the two white pips, I no. actually thought you were going to, like you're, those two white pips are That was a really low hanging fruit, fruit yeah. right? Yeah. I'm not taking the low hanging fruit. Anybody can look at this card and go, whoa, four mana, that's a lot. Also, it's Orzov, and I think it's so funny. This side Side note, why are we bringing so many Orzov legendaries? I don't know. I don't we've know. only I think- had, like, we, we're, we're at less than 50 episodes, and we've brought Brina, Kimball, and now Drana and Linvala. We why. don't even play Orzov we, I don't ever. play Orzov, yeah. right? I don't play Orzov. <laughs> I want to, but I don't play I think it. it's I just don't. so funny. Apparently, we're, that's a good card, the Orzov podcast. That's going to be a gem. <laughs> well, if you look at our logo, it is cream white. And oh, black. true. Mm. It's cream mm. and bl- yep. Yeah, that's Orzov. They just go well, well with our logo. <laughs> Today I learned we're an Orzov podcast. In we're the comments Orzov. below, listeners, can you please write? Wow, this is my favorite Orzov <laughs> podcast. Right, but like the, the <laughs> true to the two of us, we're more like Rakdos plus like green a little I'm bit. I, I, I'm more I'm a little bit. Full John. I'm a little bit yeah. more like almost Grixis, but I really uh, Mardu actually like is what I love playing. But um, anyways. That's a tangent, but that's okay. Totally so, tangent. so just just knowing when to play this card, I think and that's understanding so how it important. Different I think decks. that's such yeah. a good point. Like you really do know, and obviously, the deck I I pulled this from won a tournament. So uh, Nick yep. obviously was able to pilot. Like he he still it also matters that Nick is a very good pilot, and I will say, look. It was partially my fault we lost the game. So we kept Nick alive at four life. We had oh, no. two Orcish Bowmasters out at one point, and we decided to keep him alive at four life because we kept him down so much. It was myself and a oh uh, Tassiger player. 
And we were working together with our Orcish Bowmasters to keep him down because he had an early Ristic study and oh, an yeah. early Smothering Tithe. So when those two things were happening, we were in this position where everyone was like, holy shit, we have to work together to, to bring the Blue Farm player down. And then Nick did a good job of looking over at me on his right and being like, are you going to be able to stop Tassiger once I'm dead? And I was like, shit, no, obviously not. Because the Tassiger was developing way beyond me because I had put resources into um, Bosejuing the Smothering Tithe at one point. So I was way behind. So the Tassiger was way ahead. And I was like, shit, I might need this blue farm player to help me survive this Tassiger. So I was like, you know what? We're going to keep you down, but we're going to keep you right where we want you, where we can hopefully kill you at any time. And, and it was four been... life. And oh, guess no. what? He won with four life. <laughs> oh, so... <no. laughs> so I'll never do that again. I won't I won't negotiate with the blue farm players anymore. But you Nick hear that did a great job players? of finessing me. I know. I got finessed pretty hard, but you know, you you never know. But... When a blue farm player has 15 cards, you know, sometimes they win with four life. <laughs> and I think that <laughs> really goes to the point, right? Like, to your point, like, Nick knew what he was doing. He knew how to, like, politic. He knew how to use not just the cards in hand, right? But, like, the like his ability to read the board, know what, what he needed to have, what, what creatures were out with this out, and was able to navigate a sticky situation. Yep, it definitely is a success story for this card. So it's nice that we're, we're we have some fresh anecdotal high level cedh like in a 60 plus person tournament yeah. um anecdote for this card i think that might be the first time that we've had like like a very relevant card come up that one of us played against immediately listeners we uh won't make a habit question of this. mark we won't make a habit of this i'm just gonna let you know right now <laughs> yeah otherwise it's just gonna we're gonna become a, a, an offshoot of the howling salt mine where we're just like every time we lose to a card that we don't see very often that's the card we talk about so, it's so freaking good it's too so good, good. <laughs> i i only lost to it because it's a sleeper <laughs> <laughs> um, all right <laughs> speaking of uh this card is good uh what point of mind do you think uh best supports why you think it should be in the main deck i think it's the the it's got to be the second part that your abilities are my abilities like that is the bread and butter of this card you play this card not for the stacks aspect of it you play it yep. because you're taking advantage of really good activated abilities in the meta so you're playing this card to get Thrasios. It's like, you have a Thrasios? No, I have a Thrasios. Like, that's what you're looking for. The way you just said that made me think, would this card still be good? Would you still consider this card if it was just this card has other creatures' activated abilities, but it doesn't shut out the other cards? For that, it, it would have to be like three mana. Right. I think. It's lower cost, right? Or two. Yeah, it, it, like two would be incredible. It would be an Oh my gosh. Two. Yeah, it depends on what the power and toughness were as well. Like, a tuned down version where it didn't shut down other people's stuff, I think it would have to be a pretty low mana cost for you to want something like that. So I think it does it does matter a lot. And, but the difference between... I mean, we talk about this... We've talked about this in the podcast a lot. The difference in mana between a three mana cost card and a four mana cost card is greater than a zero yeah. to one or yep. a one no, no, to for two. Sure. No, no, and it for doesn't sure. sound right because mathematics proves <laughs> otherwise, but in but Magic the Gathering, it matters, it's, so, it matters much. so much. That extra, the gap that between extra a three cost and a four cost is huge compared to the gap between a one and a two cost. It's just how the game plays. Yep, that's it just, really is. Just, it is what it is. It, the difference is massive. Um, but yeah, that's that's the best point that you have for this card. Like that, Being able to utilize good cards in the format and i love that i love cards and i've brought many cards to this podcast that are the the, the reason they're being played is the speculation that everyone's playing good cards all right kyle it's time has your mind changed on this card from what i've said are you convinced that this is a good card yes i am and oh. it's not just because i got whooped by it and <laughs> i'm salty <laughs> <laughs> but it's unfortunate but yes and this is a card that i also have tested in my esper slurp list aka my <laughs> esper yes. life life total matters okay it's the deck that i've talked about many times in this podcast where i'm using blood chief's ascension rug of smothering shieldred all those effects to just <laughs> slurp the life totals out of everybody at the table so this card's really good in that too um, just because of the three, four vigilance beater, as well as, you know, slowing the game down. I, I think it does a good job of all those things. So I've played this card. I think it's good. 
seeing it be successful in a top list from a top player, because Nick is a very good player. Um, I am excited for this card, but at the same time, a little worried that I'm going to have to think about playing against this card more because I think it's going to catch on. I really do. It's a, it's a damn good card. Uh, yes. Drawn in Linvala, that's a good card. Ooh, man, I'm on such a good roll. I, I don't You're know. on a streak, y'all. Can you bring some fringe shit, please, next week? <laughs> you heard it here, <laughs> listeners. You in the, heard, in the comments, listeners, say, everybody. we want the old, y'all. <laughs> you heard I it here. the old, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> you guys heard it here. He's asking me to go back to my... Yeah, you're not deep enough in your bag. Where's Barb Servitor? Whatever happened to that guy? <laughs> well, uh, real fast, guys. I just want you all to know that um, Kyle has still shot down like three or four cards that I brought <laughs> the, those last couple of weeks. Whoa. So uh, we do, uh, he does his due diligence and really makes sure that um, we we bring a little bit of quality here, like a, a little bit. Oh, yes. we Look, we are a CEDH podcast. Many of the commenters, especially the Reddit commenters, don't think we are because they call us bad. But guess what? We are, in fact, a CEDH podcast. Now, don't you dare go look at my performance for this last <laughs> tournament because I had the worst performance I've ever had in a CEDH tournament. I didn't win a single game. You I had show two up. draws you just gotta three show up losses. Sometimes. Like you said, that's just how it goes. Rough tournament for me. So it, 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 was, it was brutal. Doesn't mean I'm bad. It just means I was bad that day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, some days are like, a, you know, th this is a different podcast, uh, but like I was really surprised on uh, from that, that your tournament had so much blue farm back. Blue farm was like back for that tournament. Like yeah. it had a really high conversion. Yeah. Seven, four out of the seven lists like ended up converting. Like that's not nothing. It, there was a no, lot of it's blue not. Farm. There's actually a lot of players in the Pacific Northwest who have switched to Blue Farm. So there's a lot of players. I know that there's one Sisse in particular, one Najila that switched to Blue Farm. So I think that there is a movement towards that. And we were actually missing one of the Blue Farm players that we see really consistently there. They live kind of like far away. So I think that they just couldn't make it for this tournament. Okay. But that Blue Farm player or has top 16 in like the past couple tournaments, <clears throat> just like I have. <laughs> okay, I'm just putting it out there. Okay, lost the tournaments are top 16. I'm not terrible. I'm not terrible. Just kidding. Uh -huh. <laughs> but um, I think that there's like a, a movement towards Blue Farm again, just because we haven't seen it, which is so funny because Pacific Northwest, every single time someone from, who's not from the Pacific Northwest talks to me about our tournament and our tournament reports, they're always like, how come nobody plays Rogsai up there? I look him in the eyes and you know that I always think <laughs> I always think of this one movie scene in Pirates of the Caribbean, the original Pirates of the Caribbean, okay. where the the cursed pirate is talking to Captain Jack Sparrow when he's in the prison and he goes, you know, nothing of hell. And he like grabs him when he's like a skeleton. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. being like he's cursed. That's every time someone asks me about the PNW meta, which is just maximum control. F you rog side, everybody playing super slow, sloop, super conservative with their counter spells. Like we're mulliganing for mind break traps. Holy everyone shit. points at the rog side when the tables, like when the round starts and says, okay, we're stopping this guy. Right? Like that is the, 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 the amount of mid-range hell handshakes that happen in the Pacific Northwest is fascinating. That's so And it's to the point where the players who played Rogsai hate playing in the tournaments because they struggle so much. They're just because so you're hated out. Players, they're like that's one hundred percent. Everybody that's knows. So Every, I mean, there's so many good players. Yeah, like we're just so responsible, and it, it it's like we're kind of in that opposite end of the spectrum where some metas I've heard go towards like the everybody jumps on the wrong side train so that that can't happen. So yeah. that you can't make those control handshakes because there's too many rog side players. Two so instead of the rog side players, players other, yeah, right? exactly. So the, so the so the two rog side players work together, kind of thing. Not like it's the opposite end of the spectrum from that. Mm. So the it, it's a different type of hell. It's not the turbo hell of like every time you sit on there's two rog side players at the table. It's the opposite. It's there's no rog side because the ones that have tried to play rog side have never been successful. Like I, I think if you look back to all this, the Pacific Northwest like CEDH tournaments, I don't know if a Rogside has ever won. I'm, I, I'm interested somebody, to know in the comments below. Know. One yeah, of the PNW people, they yeah, let us know um, because I wasn't there for the super early ones, so I'm not sure about the really early ones. So 
Yeah, uh, let us know. But anyway, that's my really long tangent about the Pacific Northwest CDH. No, it's but, good. Wow. I mean, we are a really CDH podcast. That. We are. We that's... actually play. We don't just bring fringe cards. In case the Reddit, <laughs> the Reddit haters forgot. But then we always talk about the Reddit people 38 minutes into the podcast. They yeah, ain't here. They're not here. We say that every time. They're not they here. here. They don't know it. They don't know it. <laughs> they don't know. But if you are, are from Reddit and you spite listening to us, thank you. We really appreciate that. Thanks for spite listening. Spite listening to yeah, us? No, so some good. people on Reddit are nice. They okay? are nice. Sometimes they're really nice and they leave good thought-provoking comments. There's even some that we see consistently that yeah. post on like every single one of our posts. So shout out to all of you who help us out on Reddit because I think that's where we get a lot of our exposure, to be honest. I think the most of the people who have found us have been like, oh, I've seen your posts on Reddit. Or when I go to tournaments and I sit down and I hand oh, out cool. my, like floating mana cards, people will be like, oh, yeah, I've seen your post on Reddit. So as much as the Reddit haters hate, I think the Reddit lurkers are our stands. So shout yeah. out the Reddit lurkers. <laughs> I won myself. <laughs> All right, Kyle. It's time for that's a good card question mark. Tell them what we're about to do. Yep, so for those of you who haven't played our That's a Good Card question mark segment, what we're going to do is Yah is going to be providing me the name of an obscure magic card, and it's going to be my job to guess everything about that card, as well as you, the listener. So go ahead and pause the video or the podcast, wherever you're listening. Uh, after Yah gives us <laughs> the you. name of the ex- obscure magic card, go ahead and play along with us. Shout out to all the people who post their guesses in the comments below. We really appreciate it. All right, Yah, give me the card of the week. The card of the week is Kaisu Drake. Let me spell that for you. K-Y-S-C-U Drake. K-Y-S-C-U Drake. Kaisu Drake. I like that it almost sounds like Kyle. So this is my Mm -hmm. dragon. So obviously it's a dragon. So it's a red card. Mm -hmm. I am thinking that this is old, but not like super old. It's not like Shivan Drake old. So I'm going to go with like a four mana. It's going to be two and two red. And it's going to have flying. And it's a three, three. And it says tap and pay a red mana. Kaisu Drake deals two damage to up to two targets. And the flavor text reads, scorching the earth as it flies. The townsfolk fear the Kaisu Drake. Ah! (laughs) That's a screech. (laughs) Quote. (laughs) uh, The kid from the dragon animated movie that everybody likes that i don't know how to about dragon? shit how, how to train your, train your dragon yeah <laughs> solid i'm gonna get a lot of hate for solid. not knowing hey, how to hey, train hey. your dragon great. it's a great movie don't don't hate it i'm on sure us. it it's is i think i've seen the, i've seen the first one i've seen the first one all three and are it was great. a very good movie all three are great i can't believe that now everybody knows i don't know how to train your dragon that's fine but it's okay it is what it is but let's talk about how we trained uh how we got uh kaisu drake kaisu drake okay so you got some parts right i'm gonna give you out of five i'm gonna give you uh, one and a half so you got oh my the, god i was that far off you got the mana value right okay so it's four is cost. it green it's green. Damn it. It's three and a I'm green pip. thinking about that. It does have Damn flying, it. right? I almost gave you two. Okay. I almost gave you two. No, I don't deserve it. But it's two. a two-two. And it does oh, have cool. an activated ability for one green pip. Okay. And it says uh, activate with a green pip for uh, plus zero, plus one until end of turn. You cannot spend more than one green. Spend more than green in this way each turn. Uh, oh, so you can only pump it once? Yeah, you can only pump it once. So it can be a 2-3 uh, back when magic was fair. It also has Sacrifice Kaisu Drake and Spitting Drake. Search your library for a Vishivian, Vishivan break, Drake. Oh, I'm sorry. For Vishivan Dragon and put it into play. Shuffle your library oh, afterwards. So if you it's have like a polymorph. This, yeah, if you have or this. Or polymerization, rather. And the Spitting Drake, which we may bring up later. I'm not going to describe it right now. Oh my gosh, I'm right going right to have now. to guess what the hell that thing does. Yeah, okay. Uh, if you have me. both of these in play, and you sacrifice both, you get to go look for 
Well, actually, the Super Dragon crazy. 9000. You, you mentioned Vishiv. Didn't you say Vishiv and Drake? Shivan Drake. Dragon. Shivan Drake. This is v- the Shivan Drake. Via Shivan Drake. Okay. So somebody's going to really butcher. Like, I'm yeah, not going to look it up in case we do this later. I mean, I'm like, an this, honest. Here's here's the dragon for you. Oh, we talk, forgot to talk about the art. Oh, well, it's okay. It's okay. Wait, I haven't sent the art, art oh, yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, I'll what's tell you what was on my mind. Go my ahead. vision. My vision was like a rocky cave mm-hmm. and then like this like this like burnt like a uh, path that looked like that like a like a dragon like like dragged something that was burning That's across nice. right and then just like in the back of the cave is just like the eyes of a dragon like the outline of a dragon like it just dragged something burning into a cave that's actually that really was good. my thought process. Man, you should be you should you should work with an artist for this. Uh, that's that's the card right there. Kyle has it on the screen right now. Do I? Yeah, he he will. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> know what this me. reminds me of? What's that? Sing along with me, listeners. <laughs> dragon tales, tales dragon, dragon tales. Yep. It's almost time for dragon tales. Come along, take my hand. Let's all go to Dragon Land. <laughs> <laughs> that was my childhood, dude. dude that's this that's card. I mean, this card Drake came from Visions. It, it got one printing mm-hmm. in Visions, which is old. I'm yes, pretty. correct. That's cool art. I like that a lot. It's very nice. Old, old art. It's like a. It's like just like a wonderful green dragon just going out for a little flight around the fall leaves. It's quite beautiful. Oh yeah, this is old. This is probably older than some of our listeners. All right, folks. True. That's it. That's it. Thank you so much, listeners, for listening to today's episode on Drana and Linvala. And thank you so much, Ya, for suggesting this fun card. All right. Please direct your attention to the description down below where you can find links to our link tree, where you can find all the places that we host our podcast, whether it's Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or Spotify. Additionally, check out our link to our Patreon where you can find additional taxi content. We post once a month to our Patreon as well as adding uh, additional podcasts there. So if you're interested in some more podcasts from us, check out our Patreon. Also, join us in our Discord. We've been having an influx of people joining the Discord, all eager to talk about CEDH. So if you're looking for a CEDH community, especially one that likes talking about fringe CEDH cards or fringe CEDH lists, hop in the Discord and say hello. All right, thank you so much for listening to today's episode, and we will see you next Monday. Bye. Bye. Thank you.